This video is sponsored by Harley Benton. Hi there, Perfected Castro here and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. This is part two of my three-part gigging with Harley Benton video series. In part one, we unbox the Fusion 3 HHFR, the SC552, and the DNA FX Git Pro. And towards the end of that video, I showed you clips of all three Harley Bentons in a live gig scenario. So here in part two, I will detail all the pre-gig setup steps that I took to get all these Harley Bentons ready for the show. Here we go. <laughs> I'm prepping the Harley Benton rig for this weekend's round of gigs. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that rhymed. Anyway, um, this will allow me to give you guys my first impressions of each piece. <laughs> First up is the Harley Benton SC550, which you can see is a very striking single cut type guitar. See, I mean, look at those flames. Wow. <laughs> and as I mentioned in the unboxing, this guitar is very light for its type. So I'm looking forward to gigging with this because we have uh, long sets ahead of us. And whoever set this up before it got shipped to me did a really good job because I did not do anything else except tune the guitar up. The neck feels nice and comfortable, closer to slim 60s than the fat 50s style. <laughs> According to the specs, we get 22 medium stainless steel frets, which is awesome, especially at this guitar's price point. Strong with Diodario 10s, this feels like it's gig ready. It's nice and smooth and there isn't any hint of grit or stickiness to it. <laughs> For the pickups, we get two Tesla Alnico humbuckers, which are wired in a very straightforward fashion. No coil splits, so it does not claim to be anything else but a straight up raunchy rock and roll machine. <laughs> I also really like the way the heel is shaped because this just cradles my hand and I have unfettered access to the upper frets for all the widdly diddly. <laughs> Okay, so the SC550 is ready. Let's uh, move on to the Fusion 3. So here's the Harley Benton Fusion 3 HHFR in a beautiful trans purple finish. Very, very nice super strat. Now this particular Fusion 3 has a beautiful flamed roasted maple neck. Take a look at that. <laughs> I don't know how they can offer this at this price point. It's amazing. <laughs> The thing that struck me most about this guitar is how easy and smooth the tuners are. Grover tuners at this price point is just so much bang for the buck. <laughs> And 
like with the SC550, I didn't do anything special to this guitar aside from tuning it up and locking the Floyd Rose nut. As you can see in the earlier clip, the Floyd Rose is nicely set up. And all the strings return back to pitch as they should. Now the two Roswell pickups sound pretty good and I really like the coil split function. Sounds really great with a uh, lightly overdriven tone and some delay. And humbucker mode has a nice bark to it. Out of the box, this Fusion 3 is a little rough around the edges compared to the SC550. I mean, it's set up quite nicely. The action is nice and playable once I tuned it up, but I don't know, the back of the neck has some rough spots, particularly in, in this area. It's probably the wood moving slightly after it's been built and stored and shipped. So I'm going to take a little bit of fine sandpaper and just knock it smooth. A little more. Okay, there you go. Problem solved. <laughs> nice. Now the frets are also medium jumbo stainless frets. Though, again, compared to the SC550, these strings feel a little grittier and the only difference I can tell is that the SC550 comes strong with the Adario 10 to 46 and the Fusion 3 has a it's not it's not specified so I'm I'm guessing the, these are factory strings <laughs> So if I weren't pressed for time, I would do a personal setup on this guitar just for my peace of mind, but <laughs> I'm heading to the gig in a little bit. So I will just bring another backup Floyd Rose guitar. Though after a little bit of playing, that stickiness and grit has gone away. So I'm just chalking it up to the no-name factory strings. <laughs> Now on the DNA FX Git Pro, I programmed four presets that will carry me over through the gigs. The first preset is my clean patch with a little bit of chorus and delay and some compression thrown in. <laughs> into control mode, I can turn the chorus and delay on and off at will. The next preset is my crunchy plexi patch. I can use the onboard expression pedal to ride my gain. So I can go from this. To full plexi roar. In control mode, I have access to more stuff. I have a tube boost to uh, make things a little more comfortable gain wise. I also have an EQ set up a uh, post amp for a uh, solo level boost. Okay. 
Now, unfortunately, the WAM module of the DNAFX Git Pro can't be engaged using the onboard expression pedal's toe switch. And this is something that Harley Benton is already working on. So that will be addressed in a future firmware update. So I'm using the Ottawa assigned to a control switch instead of using an outboard WAM pedal. And this is how that sounds. That'll work. Okay, the next patch is a modulated high gain tone. And I'm using the Soldier Amp model, which is based on the Soldano SLO 100. <laughs> And like with the previous patch, I can ride the gain using the expression pedal. In control mode, I have the EQ solo boost, as well as the delay assigned to switches so that I can turn them on and off at will plus the tap tempo. And my last preset is another high gain patch, this time using the powerful amp model uh, based on the angle Powerball. <laughs> Control mode is similar to the previous patch, EQ, delay, and tap tempo. And of course, the expression pedal to ride the gain. Now that everything is in order, I am going to pack up and head on over to the gig. See you guys there. This concludes part two of this three-part Gigging with Harley Benton video series. Click on the end card to go see part one if you haven't seen that yet, or click on the other end card to go see part three, where I share my post-gig thoughts and recommendations on all three Harley Benton products. See you there.